Even dudes that don't maybe play sports. <laughs> that was the, the sports gods. <laughs> what the fuck? That was so loud. Sorry. I'm like, if I was 70, <laughs> I'm done. I'm dead. That That's the type of noise it takes out a 70-year-old man. Oh, my God. You, you always make my stomach hurt with laughter. You oh. make me laugh so hard. What? Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Hey guys, Adam Ray here, coming to you live from my bedroom. Uh, Not my childhood bedroom, but the bedroom I stay in when I stay at my mom and stepdad's house in Seattle, Washington. Doing a surprise pop-in show with my boy Joey McIntyre at the Showbox Theater. Um, It's Monday right now when you guys are watching this, so um, the show was great. Thanks to everybody that came out. Thanks to everybody that came out to Utah and Denver with the Impractical Jokers. Those shows were a blast as well. We got Red Rocks coming up this Thursday. I can't wait. Chelsea Handler, Joel McHale, Jay Farrow, and myself. Red Rocks Amphitheater, Denver, Colorado. Tickets at SeriousFest.com. There's still a few left. Come out. It's going to be a bonkers night. Uh, And then we got Atlanta coming up. You know what to do. Punchline. Get there. May 18th through the 20th. But not before May 12th. The Hollywood Improv. Big show. I'm doing an hour. My boys Patton Oswalt and Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso. We'll be there as well, and a special surprise guest. May 12th, Hollywood Improv, Friday, 8 p.m. It's going to be a bonkers show. I would be there if I were you. Tickets at Improv.com. May 26th and the 27th, Irvine Improv. We just added it. Can't wait. Four shows. Come out and see your boy. Can't wait. New hour. Um, Pretty close on locking down a special uh, date and location. Details to come. Speaking of details, today's guest, oof. Lover, so funny, known her forever, uh, a beast on and off stage, great writer, great comic. Her new special, 44, is streaming on YouTube right now, and uh, and it was a great, great conversation. Sarah Tiana is today's guest on the ALN Podcast. Follow her, uh, Sarah Tiana, on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Her clips are great. She writes for The Roast, Lights Out with David Spade, NFL Pylon with Taryn Killam, uh, Marino 911 she was on. Uh, she's done it all, and uh, and it's a great up from top to bottom. Enjoy the hell out of it. Obviously, click here and subscribe to ALN on YouTube for all the episodes, clips, and and more. AdamRayComedy.com for all the tour dates. Like I said, coming through uh, Red Rocks, uh, Hollywood, uh, Atlanta, Irvine, and then we hit uh, Reno June 1st through the 4th and Sacramento June 8th through the 10th. Seattle, that big show, June 17th at the Triple Door. First show sold out. Second one's got a few left. Go to AdamRayComedy.com to get those tickets and your merch. Follow your boy on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Adam Ray Comedy. And, of course, subscribe to the podcast right here and uh, iTunes, Spotify as well. But um, but that's it, I think. Hope you guys are having a, a great start to the week. And enjoy the fuck out of this episode with the one and only Sarah Tiana. The uh, name is about last night, and Brad came up with it and then left to be a dad (sighs) we still haven't seen the kid and um (laughs) and he uh and so my buddy was like why is it called that and i go oh brad came up with it and he's like well you should ask people what they did last night Mm -hmm. as like just the even if that's all you do to get into why it's called that Mm -hmm. um so i haven't done it yet so let's try it out for the first time with sarah tiana um (laughs) What'd you do last night? Oh, what did I do last night? That is a really great question. Right? Um, I think like we never ask. It's always like, what have you been up to? Right. What'd you do last weekend? Mm-hmm. What are you doing coming up? But what about, just take us back. To- so last night, what, eight hours ago, sure, whatever yeah. that was, I was in a mad rush to finish a screenplay before the writer's strike. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is like day one, by the way. This is day one. It happened. It it actually happened about two hours after we sent it into the production company. And For like that's been, Mazel tov, by the way. Yeah. That's been 
producing Pro- it. Yeah, so we sold moving. the movie to Spyglass a couple years ago, awesome. and but we've been in rewrites. You know, once they hire a director, then you have to do all these rewrites and stuff. And it, and uh, yeah, so it's just kind of been this crazy, insane process. And then um, basically, they needed. A, a, a new overhaul on basically a central theme of the movie and so they gave it back to my writing partner and I who originally created the script they had hired a couple of other writers mm. that's always what happens and then the studio is like we want you guys to change this and this and this and we want the original writers back because we we liked that you know like they're <sighs> like it's a Christmas movie so our cool. like, light jolly sense of humor a little bit better and so we Basically got it back seven, eight days ago, and we had, and had to, to address all their completely notes. Completely overhaul. Everything Holy shit! What was that like? It was insane. I mean, was. look, you're a <laughs> accomplished baller, um, staple of the comedy writing community. I think it's safe <sighs> to say you. from all the gigs you've done, from roast to TV shows, sports shows, your own stand up. Yeah. Um, it's just something you got in your pinky, uh, aside from performing and uh, and even acting, as I saw in the uh, pylon. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But uh, writing um, a screenplay is a bigger, uh, ambitious, just overall project. But I can't imagine to have to. So you're probably somewhat accustomed to like, all right, seven eight days to like do all this. You've probably written a thousand jokes in an hour, but still different because now you're weighing in. I don't know, story, you're just a lot of other oh, things to factor in. I mean, usually to do a, a an overall rewrite would take two months. Oh, man. So to do it in eight days. It's not, well, if it was a Hanukkah movie, it would have been very doable. Because <laughs> yeah. as a Jew, we know that you can get a lot done in eight days. Mo? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yes. You're not a Jew, are you? No. Do you ever get, do people ever g- Think go? Think I am? Yeah. Oh, um, I haven't really gotten that a whole lot. I mean, lot. Tiana's not, yeah, like Southern Jew. Are there well, Jews Tiana's in Georgia? my middle Georgia? name. What's your last name? Haynes, Sarah which is Haynes. even more white. <laughs> <laughs> but, even more white. Yes, you know. That's a great Christmas uh, title. I used to go by my whole name, Sarah Tiana Haynes. Uh, and my dad gave me my middle name, and he was really proud of it. He said it's because... He said it's Cherokee because Tiana was the name of the Cherokee woman that married Sam Houston from the Alamo. Cool. And uh, she was a medicine woman. He's like, oh, I just think, you know, we're part Cherokee. And I'm like, well, you know, every white person in America is probably part Cherokee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not Cherokee enough to get a scholarship or own a casino. So <laughs> not I, with that not attitude. Enough. <laughs> yeah. So <sighs> anyway, I used my whole name when I got on stage and then. MC started dropping off my last name because they just couldn't remember all three. They were very focused on saying my middle name correctly and then would just completely forget my last name. Wow, so you could have been one of these like Sarah Michelle Geller, uh-huh, Rachel was... Lee Cook, <laughs> yeah. pa- Paul Sarah Walter Jessica Hauser, Parker. Sarah there Jessica Parker. All these three name women. A lot of Sarahs, by the really way. Really a big three... fad when I started, too. In it the was. Early 2000s. Who else? Let's name some of the most popular three name, three <laughs> banger name. <laughs> they're usually serial killers if they're men. If they're women, they're actresses. <laughs> John Bonet Ray. Rams got killed. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Yeah. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes. Legend. Dead. John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> Lorena John Bobbitt. No, that's no. no. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's hard once I start thinking about Which, it. Well, Tiana's a great. Uh, it, that flows. Like, Thank and you. it also sounds like a stage name. Yeah, but um, yeah, and I think people always call my parents Mr. and Mrs. Tiana. Oh, cool. And now they just go, "Thank you, nice to meet you." They don't even. Um, we'll go back to the writer strike stuff in a minute. Yeah. And congrats on the movie. Thank you. Um, and but also, duh, I didn't know that you did that, but also I probably, if somebody were to ask me, do you think Sarah writes movies, I would say yes. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Thank you. That's very nice. Um, are, well, first of all, before we uh, move off it and come back to it. Uh, are you pumped that you got it in and it's like before the strike? Because now it's going to get going, right? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, we're, it's not still technically done. Like the the production company still has a few notes to address. But apparently I, um, the agreement that we're under freezes during the strike. So the deadline that we thought we had, we don't have. Gotcha. So we do have a little bit more time. So it'll just depend on whether or not the production company once they read it through and through, and you know they'll probably read it more than scanning it. Uh. Spyglass is a good place to have it with. Yes, Christmas movies, we can't have enough. No, and I feel like if they a Jew is saying year. that, they got to buy them every year. Got to buy them every year. I will watch the fuck out of the Hallmark Lifetime ones. Mm-hmm, me too. Even when I know the story mm-hmm. and I don't know the actors. 
and that says a lot. But it helps if you're like, Oof, Candace Cameron Bure. You know, at least I'm somewhat familiar. You know, to a fault now because she's like, should gays get married? And you're like, what? Oh, no. I want the Full House music to come on and Saget to come back and be like, oh, DJ, you and your brother are fucking lunatics. You have so much to learn. You have so much to learn. (laughs) Oh, man, her even backwards apology on Instagram was so... even worse. It was even worse. It was like, I just think how I think and feel how I feel. That's not what I meant. But I, I just meant that, you know, just... They should burn in hell. Yeah, it was so... And it's like, you've already, we all know, uh, like, you and your bro, who, uh, whatever. Mm-hmm, right, I know. Kirk, you know what you did, and you know what you said, and you know who you are. That funny, being said, I love growing pains. Funny story, we couldn't take our movie to Hallmark because it had a male lead. They only do female leads yes, now. Yes, they only do female leads. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, they have a formula, and they they say, this is the formula, and this formula works. The and girl's going on a journey. She has to have a powerful job. She has that is independent of men, does not need a man, but would like one. It's it's kind of you, there have to be seven scenes where they are doing something Christmassy, making cookies, drinking hot cocoa, decorating the tree. <laughs> All that stuff. I never really realized yeah. there is a true formula. There is a true formula. It's almost like in I feel like Sandler's got a similar yeah. movie formula where he's like the right of amount of. In, in something maybe like a Hubie Halloween or a Grown Ups, where mm-hmm. it's like enough a, a certain amount of kid jokes that could also be adult jokes, mm-hmm. a couple scenes for that his kids would dig, the adult comedy, like it's yeah, of course, a, 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 a weird character that goes, oh boy, you know, some sort of mm-hmm. if wow. they broke. And so the, when we set out to write this, we had written uh, my so my writing partner and I we met doing sketch comedy here in Los mm. Angeles. At the time, he worked at Village Roadshow, and so he was one of the 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 readers. He would read scripts and tell, like basically break it down, write for the executives to say this is what it's about. Yeah, uh, that's whether, a tough job. It's a tough job. And also, if you can do that well, like you have a great sense of story. I feel yes. like because if you can just, I was always bad at reading comprehension. I'd have to. I still now. It's got to be ADHD or ADD or fucking Asperger's <laughs> or SARS <laughs> or fucking HIV. I don't know. I got something going on. But but I would, yeah, I would read and then just space out and then have to reread the pages. Mm-hmm. So that's good that you have a partner in crime that crushes that. It also helps you write very fast because mm. if you have someone that, that you can be with. We used to sit in the same room and write. Now, Final Draft has a program called uh, Collaboration Mode. So we can both be in the Final Draft document together, writing at the same time. She'll do that a lot. And then, so we just Zoom, and then we do Collaboration Mode, and we can get everything done so quickly. We be in the same place. We don't have to be in the same room. Do you prefer, I, there's a, a buddy of mine that we're jamming on something right now, and we've done a few Zooms, and it's fine. I think in person always can be a different energy, but like if you can figure out, I don't know. It's there's it's to each his own, right? It to, it just yeah. depends. It's also very difficult to find the right person to write with. Yeah, and we have, you know, I I remember early on in my career I was on Reno nine one one. So when I first started writing screenplays, I actually talked to Tom Lennon a lot about it, and then I bought him and Ben Garrett's book on screenwriting, which is called How to Write Movies for Profit. And basically, it's a great guide to just say, like, you cannot sit here and go, this is my dissertation, this is my passion project. You have to be able to take notes. You have to be able to say no. I mean, there's a whole chapter just on parking. Like, when you go to the Fox lot, if, if this is where you go to a studio to pitch, if this is where they have you park, they are not interested in your project. Wow. It's incredibly Shout lovely. out to Tom Lennon, by the way. Yeah. Um, dear home me and um, uh-huh. friend of the pod and also I mean he's a genius but also like when you you when you have to you have to have a, a disassociation too with a project you mm. you both come in with an idea and my writing partner Patrick McCullough who is a genius so we both have this agreement if we are not both laughing it's not funny enough so then we just have to change the joke and there's no no attachment to, no yeah. attachment to anything so if he doesn't think it's funny if and immediately break down write and- it down well, Sarah, it's just like else. if it's like this and you're like, well, you're explaining why it's funny. That's case right. in point. No. Yeah. Wow. And also he's very good at final draft. So he will write everything down. If you, final draft is a screenwriting or TV writing program, whatever it what is. What a pro. Look at right to the camera. Yes. That's okay. right. <laughs> you should host a PBS show. That was fucking like Mrs. Doubtfire reading rainbow yes. shit. Yes. But uh, so he types everything out and he's very fast and efficient cool. at it. So 
I just we just kind of dictate and say the story and the lines back and forth until we get it. You're probably a beast with dialogue, yeah, and characters. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm pretty good at dialogue and characters. Or do you do both? And the- ideas. The idea. A lot of times, the ideas uh, will be a, a little bit of my idea. A lot of times, they come from stand up. You know, like right now, because of the writer's strike, we are going to go ahead and just write out a movie idea that we have been kind of noodling on in the meantime, uh, that we had been pitching before the strike, but now you can't do any pitching during the strike. And it's based on my joke about true crime, about why women like true crime. Everybody thinks that women like true crime because of we like murder, but that's not the reason we like it. We just like planning things. And so, so we're doing a funny. movie with about a bunch of party planners that plan a murder. I mean, it's a great idea. It's a fucking brilliant idea. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god! Now, why a Christmas movie? Do you love Christmas? You we, seem like a. I love Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, who doesn't? I'm by just the way, kind of a cheese ball about all of it. All, I, all holidays or all Christmas? Not all holidays. Yeah. mostly Christmas. Not a huge fan of Halloween, but now that I have a kid, it's a little bit more fun. Totally. I just don't like scary things. Woo. But I'm obsessed with Christmas movies. I watch them all year. They, as soon as now Hallmark has it to where they, it starts October 31st, and that Smart. channel is just on. Like I just leave it's it cozy. on all day. And I don't. And I, you feel like you can walk away, and you'll come back, and you haven't really missed anything. <laughs> There's yeah. a brilliance in that. I mean, it, it you're really like, is. all right, this is scene number five of the decorating <laughs> of the five of the seven decorating scenes. Yep. But I love all of it, and so as a kid, was it a big holiday for you and the fam? It was. It was a big deal. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, I, I think it still is a big deal. We we take it pretty seriously. And yeah. My, my mom always wrapped every single present. We were like, oh, <laughs> could just put. All the chapsticks in one little bag. Oh you know? my gosh, you'd wrap, wrap individual into- chapsticks? Yeah, That's my mom adorable. Grew up, you know, not having much. And so you don't get a lot of presents. And totally. So, you want to maximize. Maximize the amount of wrapping. Did they, all, your folks also from Georgia? No, my mom is from La Mirada mm. near Disneyland. Yeah. My dad is from Michigan, but they met in Northern California where my dad was at San Jose State. Cool. Yeah. And then we moved to Georgia when I was five. <laughs> So that my parents always wanted to live on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, it is right. Mm. More, no, it's the <laughs> South. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, your time where you feel like you, I don't just remember and like childhood is Georgia, like you yeah, that's, Northern I California. Just grew up that you know, and I think people you have no are San Jose always, memories. <laughs> not a ton, but I have a lot of family up there. Oh, cool. So I, I still go up there all the time. When you perform up there, do they I people perf- come out? Oh yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but my all my mom's side of the family, who I'm closest to, lives up there. So all my cousins. So we do a lot of Christmas and holidays up there. Uh, Because if it's too difficult to go back to Georgia. But that's also why my accent always goes in and out. People go, oh, you have such a bigger accent on stage. And I'm like, yeah, because my parents didn't have an accent, but everybody at my school did. Mm. So I just learned to talk two different ways. So that I could be understood no matter where I was. And so I tend to talk like whoever is talking to me. I'm kind of like Madonna, but I'm just a little bit... (laughs) Just a, a year younger than her. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say a little more, I don't know, even keeled. Yeah, and... I'm not on TikTok as much. Although, you know what? Or as talented. <laughs> so funny. Uh, but that is where it comes from. And then when I'm on stage, no one's talking to me. Mm. So I don't mimic someone. So what's your default? What would you say if you had to pick an accent? If, if you were on a deserted island <laughs> and had one accent to choose. <laughs> definitely pick southern yeah i think it's much more fun to 1000 it's very little, you too it definitely comes it out comes out or if i talk to my sister on the phone it's like dueling banjos my sister has way more of an accent than i do because she stayed there she didn't move to california at 21 like i did wow yeah yeah the um first of all when you're in the big family reunion stuff are you because you're such a effortlessly funny person off stage <laughs> and so but you're also in the business uh thoroughly so there's you're the you're the um, association for the family, right? Like for yes. for the business, yes. or is anyone else in your family in entertainment? No. Okay. <laughs> no. It, you don't have like a Nate Bargatze magic dad, or <laughs> I don't. or uh, or an Adam no, Ray. No, my dad is vagina really, monologues. Yeah, mom. my dad is really really good creatively. He he gives me a lot of incredible ideas. Actually, a few that I've taken to write movies about. 
Wow. Yeah. Because he, has, he just loves. He's an idea guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I get good ideas. And from. does he watch a lot of my shows mom, and movies? Yeah. My mom is the funny one. Mm. You know. I was gonna ask where you. She's get it from. sarcastic. My dad, is, you know, everybody laughs at, but my mom is the one that is really doing the jokes. She also listens to tons of podcasts. She probably listens to this one. Cool. I, I remember she text used to text me all the time whenever she would hear me on this one. What's her uh, first name? Sue. Sue. I think we talked yes, about we her. Yes, have. I talked about her the last Sue Tiana. <laughs> Sue, Sue Haynes. <laughs> Sue Haynes, Tiana. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever you want me to call you, I will. Your daughter's a treat. I also met uh, your other daughter in Boston. Oh, yeah, Joanna. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the smart one, yeah. The My sm- sister has oh, really? a PhD, and I, and I, you know. Yeah, tell but dick comedy's jokes. a superpower. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do people in your family? Are there people that are like I don't know distant cousins? If you see them, where they're like, I saw Dan Cook at the you know, or or <laughs> and like, have you seen him? Or or, or mm-hmm. uh, pitch you ideas that aren't great, or or um, I don't know, just geek out. That makes you feel good where you're like, oh, these, uh, yeah. I'm able to give them moments or experiences. Sure. That, yeah. yeah, I have a definitely parts of my family. Even my brother-in-law is a big comedy fan mm-hmm. and he's a fireman. So they're always watching a ton of stuff. But oh, I'm yeah. probably my mom's fourth favorite comedian. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. that, by the way, that means she's got like, she, does, that she watches she a lot. Does. She definitely watches a lot. She watches a lot of specials, way more comedy specials than I do. I, I don't know. really watch them. Well, speaking of comedy specials, <laughs> yours is fucking fantastic. Oh, it looks great. Um, it's uh, it's uh, shot at the store. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've seen you perform. We probably know each other now oh. for I don't know. I don't. I was trying to think about when Gosh. we met, and it probably was at the store, right? Had to have been. I mean, I've been a paid regular there since two thousand and nine. I think and I was what, about two thousand eleven, maybe. Yeah, and I was about a, a eleven or ten. No, eleven or twelve, maybe. I started working there, I think, in two thousand ten. Oh, you were working there? I even remember you Watched working there. Watched the phones behind the scenes. I didn't oh, want to be- a, At the door. I did, also didn't want to be um, a lot guy because I was too nervous mm. to like crash cars and <laughs> like, I'm not Good a- Good for you for yeah. admitting it because there are a lot of lot guys that I wish would not park. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know it's a great way to like, you know, build rapport with with people you're uh, trying to associate with. But um, yeah, the uh, shooting a special at the store is, I feel like, I don't know if that was always- the dream or or um or when that became like something that you were like oh that's this is the place i'm gonna do it at because it's it's your favorite club in la yeah it's your home yeah yeah it's where i started it's my home what was the store to you before you started stand-up or got to la was it like oh i had never heard of stand-up before i got to la i i started stand-up in la which Chappelle always told me is like learning to dribble in the nba yeah you don't pick up bad habits you're learning from the best it's kind of I think a game changer, Ideal. you know, um, but, and I, I had seen stand up before I, cause I did, uh, in Atlanta when I was in college, I was on a radio show, my college radio station. And we used to interview the comics that came through the punchline Oh, cool! and it was like David Allen Greer and, um, Bobcat Goldthway and cool. Mitch Hedberg is the first person to ever give me tickets to a show. Get out. So that was the first comedian I ever saw live. And people always say, did, is that when you decided to do stand-up? And I always say, you don't see Mitch Hedberg and then go, oh, I could do that. <laughs> you just Perfect. go, yeah. I have no idea how that works. Yeah. I never thought about it again until I moved to Los Angeles and I had been here for a year, oh, just over a year and I was DJing weddings and bar mitzvahs because I had DJ experience from the radio station. Oh my God. So Perfect, dumb. by the way. That translates. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and this guy that I DJed with just always said I was so funny and that I had to do stand up. And I just thought, I have ne- I don't have a sitcom. I can't do stand up. I thought you had to have a sitcom to do it. Isn't it so funny when you have no, no knowledge clue. of how to get into it? You're no like, idea. oh, you ha- you must. Ray Romano probably got a show and then they put him on stage. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is fine to think that way. Absolutely Wait, thought that. Real quick, break down for me how why you were funny as a bar mitzvah DJ. <laughs> Where were you inserting the punch? Because you're have... you're setting up songs for a lot of horny adolescent Jews mm-hmm. that are like trying to you know it's Boner City out there. Mm-hmm. And how are you fitting in? 
I was not really doing stand up on the mic. It was with driving there. He would always he gotcha. was always laughing and he would always say how funny I was and and I had always made people laugh, but no one ever told me I was funny. And looking back, it's because I was always making fun of them. And so they would be laughing, but they'd be saying, that ain't funny. That's not funny. And so I just registered it as I'm not funny, even though Holy they were laughing. Sh- yes. Does that make sense? Man. So I never thought of myself as this funny person. Did you have anybody that you would like roast and toast that would like go, like, I guess this person, your buddy that was yeah. finally the first one to go, Yeah, that's, I can take these hits, but also not feel mm-hmm. bad about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. His name was Poetry. <laughs> I mean, that was his, he was a slam poet. DJ Poetry? No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We just called him Poetry. His real name was Devin, but he, <laughs> he, <laughs> he was like, From Temecula, uh, yeah. He was on Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam. He was on that big tour that went all That's big fucking and, awesome. Yeah. He was the funny one. He was the funny poet on that tour cool. and he always would tell me how funny I was and so he was kind of the one that pushed me into it. Well you kind of do it does matter that somebody I guess who you know has that that you look at as someone who's doing it, yeah, right? Credible. If it was yeah, yeah. credible. If it was yeah. just a, a family member then I guess maybe you just go, yeah, all right, you're you probably say that to all the yeah. all the kiddos. Yeah. Uh so you get to LA and the store, so sta- you just your stand up is what to you? But you came here to be an actress. Yes. Yeah, and I couldn't catch a cold, but you know I was just doing whatever I could, doing extra work to get my SAG card. That's how I got my SAG card and whatever it took. And then um, I was started doing. I had started doing stand up after my friend told me to do it, and then from stand up. Um, I ended up, yeah, getting into the sketch comedy company randomly because I had studied abroad in Paris my senior year in college, ended up having this crazy love affair with this American actor in Paris Whoa! who spoke French. Somebody I, get Hallmark on the phone. Yes, yes. I, like they were doing sexual perversity in Chicago. I saw him on stage and I was like, this guy is so... Hot. I don't know. He was such a good actor. Yeah. And so the next day I came back by myself to the play <laughs> and then ended up spending the last week with him. And he showed me all of Paris and he spoke French. So it was kind of this whirlwind. Then it was like, see you later. And I never saw him again. Then I'm doing. That man was David Hyde Pierce. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll cut to a headshot of David. Uh, I'm doing... Wow. Yeah. Then I'm doing extra work in Los Angeles. I think I was. On a, and one of the PAs um, on this show, I don't remember the show. It was with Sally Field, and it was about the Supreme Court. That's all I remember. Cool. But one of the by the p- way, sold in the room. <laughs> yeah, right. It's Sally Great Field. Hit. It's the Supreme Court. Somebody falls in love. Somebody gets I don't know gonorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's my favorite. <laughs> Sally Field rules. My favorite thing to do is uh, my friend Bennett Weber, who's this incredible writer. Uh, him and I do this <laughs> bit called Sons of Pitches whenever we're around each other, and we're constantly pitching things. And so just we're like just that. A two pitcher. Let's do. It. Yeah. Okay. It stars Sandy Bullock. You gotta have Sandy. I'm in. And uh, it's uh, it takes place in space. You don't like space. It's underwater. It's my favorite thing about the movie is that it's underwater and it's in a boat. It's not in a boat. Actually, you're right. It shouldn't be in a boat. It's in a dinghy. And they're trapped and they're heading to an island. Not an island. They're heading to Korea. You know, and like you're just constantly changing oh. it based on the faces of the people. Here. Okay. Let me try. Okay. All right. It's Tom Selleck, and he's playing football. You don't like football. He's playing ping pong, yeah. and he's with Forrest Whitaker. You don't like black people. He's with Jet Li, and Jet Li's in a tree, but he doesn't live there. He's just fighting a killer squirrel who's trying to get. It's not a killer squirrel. It's a panda bear because of Jet Li's Chinese. I don't like the path this is going down. It's Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and he works at an A and PM. Ah, love it. Right. And and Tim Allen comes in, and he goes, "Do you still have cancer?" And he goes, "That was a TV show." Mm-hmm. And then Tim Allen goes, "Oh!" And then mm-hmm. I feel like I lost you. So Sally Field comes in, Supreme Court Justice Sally Field, uh. and she's banging away with a mallet, you know. But also, she's the lady of the night. Does she's, it have to be a mallet? No, it's a dildo, and she uh. fights crime with it, but also fights cocks. She's a She's the town slut. It's Sally Slut. But Sally Struthers plays Sally Field. Um, man, yeah. Sold. They, they're, they're sold. Oh, my God. By yeah. the way, there's got to be, 
What's fun about that game, there's probably, I mean, we've both probably pitched <laughs> so, many. so many things, but like I would love to know what preceded or or came after mm -hmm. sometimes, or maybe even early on, like where you're just like, man, this is going to be great. And you somehow got in the room and you're like, what did they think when I walked out? But like, or some pictures of people that just, they, you know, they took the meeting from whatever and they, and it was that crazy where it was like Sandy Bullock space, <laughs> like, like gravity. Yeah. But on, mm -hmm. on Mars. And they're like, how do they get there? By rocket ship. You know. Right. But that's alien, right? They just pitched Jaws in space. Wow. It's Sometimes it's that simple. It really is yeah. just Simplify. so many times. And then you see stuff and you go, who pitched oh, man. this? And who said yes? Or Dude, where's my car with Ashton Kutcher? How the <laughs> fuck did that get yeah. made? I mean, Kutcher. That's how my it got made. My other favorite thing that people say is uh, now when you take pitch meetings, they go, we're really looking for the next Yellowstone. And I go... I bet you fucking are, because you probably said no to Yellowstone. 1,000. You probably said, oh, One Western, that's too expensive. Kevin Costner, nobody watches him anymore. I mean, how many times yes. did that happen? And that exec is sitting there being like, oh, uh -huh. yeah. Because no one ever got fired for saying no. In this town, this whole town is based on, I don't want to get fired, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. Until you're the guy that said no to Yellowstone, then you do get fucking fired. The shows, I feel like, that pop, like, Always Sunny, who said yeah to that? <laughs> yeah. Like, what a genius that just goes, fuck yeah, like, off this little pilot, mm -hmm. these guys, like, there was no... But that was FX, right? FX back in the day was the I know. only place that really took swings on Risks. weird. Yeah, you know, they had baskets. I mean, awesome. all of those Louis shows. Show, yeah, yeah, all of those shows were just so different. Even what was that? It was a Duchovny. It was the or no, it was uh, Eddie Izzard. It was the, and um, mm. and the gal from Goodwill Hunting. Um, right, they were a family. Mini the rich, the riches, or something, or the the Richie Rich was. Mc I don't know. Anyway, it yeah. Would, they, yeah, they. Uh, you get places that that sometimes want to make good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Sally Field Sally is Field. playing a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> the biggest Sally Field tangent <laughs> in the history of podcasts. And by the way, Sally Field tangent is a great band name. If you're out there and you play the bass or, and you're looking to make a mark in the group, or a fantasy football name, mm -hmm. Sally Field tangent. You can have it. It's coming up. Okay. Or do you? I'm a huge fantasy. Football I know you are. Player. Do you have your names already locked for next season? Or no, no you'll, I mean I usually you're not that crazy. I no, I mean I usually always keep the same one, which okay. is like Tiana Finn Square. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> they're so all stupid, dumb. but they're yeah, fun to you. Yeah, Southern Freed. Yeah, for Max Freed cool. is my baseball yep. fantasy name. Yep. Anyway, all right. Matter. So Sally Field. Yeah. So anyway, this PA, uh, it's her birthday, so I go to her birthday party and I run into the guy from Paris, and he <laughs> is in. A sketch comedy company and he's and he's like it's so weird but there's all these Georgia people in this company and I go uh, and the girl that he's dating is she's from Augusta her name's Camille and she is now still one of my best friends I have no idea what happened to the guy uh, from Paris I think he's still you know he got married like a couple years later mm. to another woman that spoke French none of us spoke French we weren't <laughs> You know, fancy like him. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's where I met Patrick, my writing partner, and that's how. Um, and then he was super into movies and screenplays, and mm. I just said, oh, you know, I had an idea for one. At the time, it was called Manage. It was about the first woman to ever manage a baseball team. So that was the first movie we ever wrote, and that was probably back in 2006. It was wow. the first time we started writing movies. And wow. so we wrote several since then and then we decided to write a, a Christmas one because we go, ah, they got to write, they got to buy a Christmas one every yep. year. Let's just take a stab at it. And we wanted to write one that was PG. We wanted to take a stab at writing a that was movie my next that question. was clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Is that challenging? I mean, you're not super no. filth. Yeah. No, I'm not a, I'm not a dirty comic yeah. anyway. Um, if I didn't say the F word, I would be completely Very clean. clean yeah. yeah. Is uh does having a uh, child your uh, adorable son is three. three yeah does that influence in helping to write or no it's not like no I mean I don't get any ideas from him I right. can't even, I barely <laughs> even get any ideas from him for stand up you right. know I mean I do get some I thought I would get way more sure uh so the it, no. but it's is it a but it's not a kid movie it's just a PG yeah no it's just about uh, yeah but I guess PG is for so kids could watch it yeah yeah yeah. Um, no, it's about an adult man that still believes in Santa. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
But it ends up being because of, you know, conspiracy. You know, he's like, that's his conspiracy theory. Does Santa make an appearance? Oh, I mean, you'll have to watch it to find out. Great teaser. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. <laughs> um, wow, you're already ready to do uh, to do Fallon or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of based on my writing partner's brother that is, you know, still believes it. It's believed in him for way too long. And so we kind wow. of- Wow, like, almost like kids from... that are breastfed too long. Yeah, but I mean, it was more because he's on the spectrum, but- Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> We'll edit this out. <laughs> Welcome back no. to Think Before You Talk. <laughs> no, oh, that's not a negative okay, thing. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, no. Do uh, you love sports? Love sports. Yeah. <laughs> Changing the subject. No, no, no. We'll, yeah, we're all over the place. We're all over the place. Um, love sports. Do um, sports and comedy, I feel like, have a real tight knit, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sure you find... Not only for for life and and like anecdotes or metaphors, but like comedy. I feel like the same way. Um, you can kind of you know their sports and comedy as far as like uh, I don't know like getting reps. The way people talk about you know getting your sets in for it's like going to the gym or doing this and like you know having a a bad game maybe in baseball or a set that didn't go the way you want. Like there's just a lot of similarities as far as like sure um, the way the the grind of it. I guess. I guess so. I think a lot of athletes love comedy. Yeah. A lot of comics love athletes. It's the same with musicians. We all have you know. Uh, every comic wants to be a rock star. Every rock star wants to be a comic. Yeah. It's just you, it's just your fantasy of what happens between the songs, right? It's between, you know, I think rock stars love comedy because they think, oh man, it'd be so great to make people laugh between songs. And I think comedians love rock stars and want to be rock stars because like, wow, I really wish I had a guitar to play over all this quiet times, Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's really what it comes down to. And so I think when it comes to athletes, um, it's just a different muscle. Mm. Like we, we just flex different muscles. Did you play sports? I played sports a little bit, but yeah. once I got into high school, I wasn't good enough to keep going. Yeah. And I didn't, we never had the money to do camps over the summer yeah, yeah, yeah. or anything like that. So now I'm going to force my child into it. And You're... then that I'll, <laughs> yeah. and then I'll get to live vicariously, by the yeah. way. He is a freak of nature. <laughs> he is and I And I'm going to say this. There are people that, and I used to be like that with my nephew, where you'd see a little bit of skill set, and you're like, this kid's going pro. <laughs> yeah. And I have a buddy that has a kid like that where he, he says it, but I think deep down he knows the kid, I don't even think he'll make the sixth grade basketball team. Oh, no. But but he's like but he's like putting all his eggs in that basket a little bit too hard oh. where he's like, he's like he's, dude, you throw him the ball, and man... It hits him in the face, but then he picks it up, <laughs> and then with the way he picks it up, and then he starts chewing on it. But then, dude, but he chews on it like like the passion in his eyes, <laughs> and you're like, it's not gonna oh. happen. But but um, but your son is like, I mean, you generously will post some videos of him hitting 500 foot drives. <laughs> Not 500. Uh, but there, but the hand-eye coordination at <laughs> yes. his age yeah. is above average. It is definitely above average to the point where I'm a little surprised sometimes. You know, we maybe maybe about a month ago we started playing uh, baseball in the backyard, just mm. throwing the ball or like trying to get him to hit a ball in the air um, because he had been to a party and all the kids were hitting the ball in the air. And so he, he came back and was like, I want to do that. And he was like, I'm only hitting the ball in the air now. And I'm like, but the T's right there. You're, he was still two at the time. And so I, by like, the way, all, right. all these social like pressures and just like, yeah. apparently this is what's what two year olds do now. So <laughs> time to adjust mom. Well, no, it was an older party. It wasn't even a two year old party. It was a, a four year old party. A kid turned four. That's a big age difference. It is, yeah. Right. So he was about to turn three, so okay. it's really just a year age okay, okay, difference okay. because uh, some of our a lot of our play date friends are a year older. I think um, that's smart. Yeah, I mean that just happened to be like my friend had a kid a year before I mm. did, and so we were hanging out cool. and doing music class at their house, which you don't have to be an age for. Right. And then now we have all these friends that are four. Cool. That's just the way it happened. Cool. So anyway. So then he comes home and he's like, I'm just going to hit the ball in the air now. And so we just started practicing in the backyard. But I took a different approach than we did with golf because I didn't really take an approach with golf. It was just, hey, you got a little plastic golf club. And then he just started whacking it and he would break every golf club. So then we had to get him a real golf club. And 
But Chris kept saying all the things that he was doing wrong <laughs> and like coaching him and be like, oh, no, hold your arm straight or do it like this or oh no, don't don't duff it. You know, like all that. And I'm like, he's too like and at the time he was one. <laughs> don't duff it. <laughs> he literally. Walked- what are you two? <laughs> <laughs> he, he literally walked to pick up a golf club. That was the whole reason he walked. And so I'm and so I said this time I just said, let's just tell him what he's doing right. Don't mm. tell him anything he's doing wrong. A coach will tell him what he's doing wrong. Let's just encourage him to keep playing because that's the hardest part. It's yeah. like I just don't want you to quit. I don't want him to get frustrated and quit doing things mm. and give up. So that's the approach we took. And it took about two weeks and then he just is hitting the ball in the air, and now he throws it. Now we have to play baseball outside because he throws it way too hard in the house. Oh, my God. And it's, it, you know, coming. <laughs> but he also thinks every ball he hits is a home run, and he'll do a bat flip. And then he runs the bases three times, so he gets three RBIs on a solo home run. Cool. Which is really impressive feat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. So just trying to enjoy all of those moments. But, yeah, hand, hand-eye coordination, and I think a big part of it came because he walked really late. Mm. And the longer you crawl, the better you are at hand-eye coordination. Because in order to put your left hand forward and your right knee forward and then alternate, oh, yeah. you are using your left brain and your right brain. So that helps your hand-eye coordination. So whenever you see people go, oh, I never walked. I just, you know, or I never crawled. I went straight to walking. Then watch them, see how often they trip. They're, they're goofy usually bastards, clumsy. yeah. They yeah. probably, so when you see someone crushed at Dance Dance Revolution mm-hmm. at a Dave & Buster's, you're like, oh, that guy crawled for days. Crawled for a Probably crawled time. to the Dave & Buster's. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. So yeah. you said you don't get a lot of material from him. No. By the no. way, you can say but his that, name? I mean, yeah, Cage. Cage. Yeah. Great name. Thank you. Obviously named after Michael Cage, the Seattle Supersonics power forward. <laughs> So, yeah. which, by the way, I just want to commend you on that choice. That's how much we are in the sports. <laughs> we did a deep dive into sports. What is it? Where does it come from? It came from Nicolas Cage because we were watching the. Oh uh, my God! Yes. Not too far off. No, no, no. Nicolas uh, Cage is the Michael Cage of acting. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I was riding on Lights Out with David Spade yes. when I was pregnant, and my head writer had written on SNL for a long time, and we were all talking in the room writer's room one day about um, how hard it was for me to come up with a name. And he goes, oh, did you ever see the baby naming sketch on SNL? And I was said, no. And so he showed it to me and I laughed. I took it home and I showed it to Chris and it stars Nicolas Cage and Julia Sweeney. Amazing. And Chris goes, ah, oh, Cage is kind of a cool name. And we were looking for a C name so that him and Cage could have the same initials. That's really sweet. And so, and then I thought, oh yeah, because that, sounds sporty but without too much pressure like he if he doesn't go into sports it's okay and then if he does like we're not naming him speed and he's slow you know oh <laughs> my <laughs> god you know I mean? like, so, so funny yeah, we're not naming him dinger and he can't hit a home run yeah you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like there's backstroke not- he's allergic to water <laughs> yeah. this really backfired should have called him backfire <laughs> but then it's, he's got back knee so you know it's yeah. It's always on, Neil, he's allergic to Neosporin. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so. That's exactly right. Yeah. You have to think about that You stuff. do. And, and we also wanted a name that we didn't, because we kept coming up with names, and then we'd be like, oh, so-and-so has a kid named that, and yeah. they're kind of an asshole. So then. Or there's a the thing of like, I had an ex named, you know, but what, yes, right? Like you, absolutely. You, whatever the association. Yes. yes. And so that was the first one that we had said that we neither one of us had a negative association with. Cool. And we nev- didn't know anyone else with that name. So it, it would have been awesome if, if Chris was like, I hate Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah. I think he's an underrated performer. I think is well, I think Con Air, I didn't buy it. I might have had this baby solo if he <laughs> thought so. <laughs> this is the red flag I was looking for. Finally. Wow. The last red flag yeah, yeah, goes the in the last <laughs> red flag. Great title. Great title for a rom com. Yeah. Um the uh the special uh your there's I think it's tough to be um a somebody who's do you, you didn't start writing first and then do stand up, did you? No, no I stand up first stand up first. Okay. Then became a writer slowly, yeah. Do some people see you uh um in the writing world and then they're like, Oh, you do stand up and then they're like this has happened to me when I would see someone that I didn't know maybe did stand, but I knew them only as a writer and then I'd see them on stage and there's some people that start doing writing and then try to 
My point is, you yeah. go to stand up, and it doesn't translate because no. you just because you write like a writer in yes. a writer's room. Yes, and like those jokes in a room don't always translate. Yes, and sometimes the jokes you write in a room are not evergreen. Right, and so they don't last as long. You know, um, you got both going, and yes. so and then it works the other way too. Whereas mm. a lot of comics are not good at joke writers or screenwriters or TV show writers. Totally, yeah. So it works both ways. How did you pick the set you did for the special? Um, there's a lot of because you know you've been it's a it's about what 34 yeah, almost 40 30 minutes, minutes. Yep. yeah which i think is smart too i think more and more people are going to start going that way because it's like i don't know when i watch a special i watch it in pieces mm-hmm. um 30 was easy to get through Thursday. and like made me want more <laughs> oh thank you that's nice and i feel like that's a real sweet spot that more and more people will probably start going after because it's like i don't know we're Everyone's so clip crazy anyway. Yeah. No, I didn't like, even want to release it. I just wanted to release it 30 to 60 seconds at a time on my reels. Because that's where most people watch my stand-up anyway. Um, and I had an hour before the pandemic. Yeah. I was never done, never recorded myself. Don't write anything down. I was just one of those people. Where, I mean, I have like the names of the bits written yeah. down, but I don't remember what the bit is. And to the point where now I've hired a company to do all my social media, yep. and they find stuff, and I go, "Oh my god, that joke was so fun! I forgot all about that joke." Wow! Like, and so because of the pandemic, I didn't have anything written down, and so I lost about thirty minutes of material. Or maybe about 20 minutes. And so then I um, basically, then the comedy store came to me and they just said, we're getting into the specials game and we kind of want to start with you. And we know with me and Justin, and they knew that if they did right by us, that other people would Hell yeah. follow. And so, because we're kind of like the baby sister and baby brother of the store. Fuck yeah. And so, and because they did such a great job, and I think Sosis, who produced it, is, you know, crushed it. Is such a good, so good at, all of that. He's a great advocate for comedians yes. and uh, and just getting things going and thinking yeah. big and trying to not yeah. take no for an answer. Yeah, um, we had a lot of trouble selling it, so that's why we ended up putting it on YouTube. It's just really t- difficult to sell a special in oh, today's yeah. day and age oh, yeah. if you don't already have seven on Netflix. So, <sighs> yeah, you know, like that's just where it is. And like, I think a lot of people think. Oh, you're supposed to put out a special every year. I've never been like that. I, I it takes me a really long time to really formulate an act to the where I would even release a clip of it. I, I'm just very precious with that kind of stuff. Yeah, it takes me a really long time to really work something out to the place to the to a, a place where I'm comfortable showing it to the world. How long did it take you to f- uh, form? I guess the um, the order and just all the bits that you wanted to do because you were probably then looking at a giant shelf of like all sorts of stories and bits and being like, well, then if I'm going to, you know, put this up and have it be at the store and like, there's probably extra meaning where you're like, I really like want this to be my, I thought it would be much longer. Um, it was two weeks because they said we have to do it on May 1st if we're going to do it. And that uh, literally a year ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I, I didn't have long to overthink it. So I'm kind of glad that that happened. And that material had been was pretty old cool. and it needed to be retired cool. so that I could kind of get rid of it, move on and start this next chapter of now I have a toddler and like really talking about being a mom. Mm. I kind of touch on it in the special, but I'll totally. get into it more. You have one great bit about guys. I'm not going to make you do it, but I just want to hear more about guys like not like just still thinking they can go pro uh-huh. and like not letting go athletically. <laughs> and that's just, it was really your cadence and your like sweetness to like kind of you know and sarcasm and talking about that is such a uh universal thing felt by even dudes that don't maybe play sports <laughs> that was the the sports gods <laughs> what the fuck that was so loud Sorry. i'm like if i was 70 i'm done i'm dead that that's the type of noise it takes out a 70 year old man oh my god you, ha! you always make my stomach hurt with laughter you oh, make me laugh so hard my anyway. god that um, um so sorry. so um yes. it's a it, i it was one of my favorite bits and um <laughs> wh- like as such a such a sports fan and being around like where did that and i guess this is my question just in, in maybe your writing like where does that bit like where do you get the idea for it was it happened just from like being with chris being around dudes in general like seeing 
knowing probably more guys that think they could go pro than actual pro athletes <laughs> because every dude has a piece of that whether they play it through video games or in a rec league i remember playing in a kickball league out here when i first graduated and seeing guys and i was like hey you like NBA scouts aren't coming to the kickball <laughs> league. Like, what are you swing? What are you kicking so hard for? What are you fighting with the ump for? That was me. But um, yeah, like just the seriousness and the level of competitiveness that dudes have is, yeah. I just, so where's the bit? It definitely comes from Chris. Yeah, he is the first person that I had been with in a really long time that was just such a dude. Like, just dude, all <laughs> to the core, dude. Like, just I don't know anything else, but. I mean, I eat three different things. When I first met him, he ate, I mean, I think he ate hummus every day. Wow. Um, not what he, even. What he yeah. correct you and go, it's hummus. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Please leave. No. <laughs> yeah, okay, He good. just reminded me of my dad so much. Just like, I'm good at a couple things, and I have an opinion, and I don't like to try new things. Uh, I eat, you know, that's why I eat the same three things. I like this. I go, uh, He had just had a routine. And I eat my bagel bites. Yeah. <laughs> I put on my murder she wrote and I sit on the couch yeah. and I brush my feet. You're like, yeah. what? what was like, that last how one? How yeah. are you 35 and you <laughs> already do this? And my dad is 70. So, wow. Anyway, and then it came, a lot of it came from one time um, I would give him tasks to do because uh, he really didn't know how to like cooking, like um, baking cookies. He would be like, "Oh, I'm very good at it," and I'm like, "You know what? I'll just, <laughs> I'll keep this. I'll, I'll hold this on to the cookie a, baking." A Sarah thing. Part. Yeah. Oh my god. And I have these <clears throat> peanut butter cookies that I make at Christmas, and they're really just you put the peanut butter dough in a mini muffin tin, and when it comes out of the oven, you put a Reese cup in it. It's very simple, very easy, not <sighs> difficult. By the way. <laughs> You lost me after like put in a thing like that's. I'm also not a a, mini a chef. Yeah. Yes. That sounds delicious though. But literally, the hardest part of that recipe is unwrapping the chocolate. <laughs> and so oh my I God. bring over a bag of Reese's peanut butter cups and a trash can. And I go, and a bowl. And I go, can you put, can you just unwrap these for me? And he must have had 18 questions. What do you, all the way? Yes, all the way. All the way. What about so both you kid taking a bra for both the first rappers, time? You know, both wrappers. Yes, both wrappers. Then make sure you put the wrappers in the trash and the chocolate in the bowl. Don't mix that up because that would really so be put an the issue. trash in the bowl. <laughs> yeah. By the way, unless he was high, there's no excuse for these questions. No, I, know. I once put a full he pizza was, attached to the cardboard in the oven, but I was baked out of my mind. He was watching a game. He doesn't. Oh, okay, can't thing. multitask. He doesn't. He didn't drink. He doesn't do dr nothing. Right, right. He he only drank water when I met him. And I I, I mean, and I not that, even like flavored water. Not even flavored water. I said, what about coffee? Don't drink coffee. Tea? Don't drink. I'm like, I'm not dating a camel, right? <laughs> now he camel. drinks alcohol. Thank God. Good. Thank um, God. And but uh, yes, because you can't date me. And be yeah. <laughs> he quickly realized that. So funny. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I I basically put this in front of him, watching the TV, giving him something to do. And then he started taking the wrappers. He's, then he put the trash can further in front of the TV so he could start making shots. Everything's a game. So proud. So proud With of it. Form. While he's watching the basketball game, right? Whatever, he'd and hold then, it up. Oh, also, oh, we're watching the U.S. Open. He's, I, I need to go to the driving range, right? You know, Or I'm watching the tennis, the, that U.S. Open. We should play tennis. I, anything he's watching on TV, wow. he thinks he can still wow. do. And then he played rec league basketball, and so I would go to his games. And I finally, that's why I wrote a couple of bits based on that and just my experience with watching him. And then we went to a lot more sporting events together cool. and then watching men in general inter, you know, interact in those sporting events. I mean, yeah. nothing I, I talk about on stage is not true. I, I can't just make stuff up. Um, but... Yeah, so all of it came from that, and then I finally stopped going to his rec league games because one of, one time one of his friends said, we always know when you're here because um, we can hear you laughing. And I go, oh, God, I'm not I'm not coming anymore. Laughing like, at what? Yeah, I was just, like, giggling because they would take it so seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they would get so yeah. mad and then yeah. yell at the refs. And yeah. then, oh, I yelled at a wheelchair ref <laughs> once. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but it was a shitty call. You know who you are. Yeah. I was there was not my feet were planted. It was a charge. I I just don't. I mean, we're in a middle school gym. You know what I mean? Like, this is not <laughs> oh, a, the backdrop. This is not no. 
The refs uh, are getting paid no fifteen chairs. an hour. You know, they're uh, yeah. They don't uh, want to be there. They don't want to be there, no. and they don't want, you know, men they, who are their age yelling yeah. at them. I I don't understand. So there should be a thing where you walk into a men's rec league game, and they they like they have you sign not a waiver for like injuries, but a waiver of like you know that you're not getting drafted from this game. Or like right. like almost signing away like your acknowledgement mm-hmm. of like you know this it doesn't matter type right. of right like but yeah. but even then yeah I don't know what what is I get so mad that you would giggle that's so, we would hear so you laughing bit, uh, yeah, oh and there's nothing a guy who's at full yeah. competitive mode yeah will uh will take to the heart quicker than a giggle so from the stands I just said <laughs> nope nope not gonna do it anymore um and. You know, it's also, I think that's why golf is kind of a bane in my existence. I never played golf. And I think that's because my dad was a a really big golfer. And, you know, he had two daughters and Mm. my mom. And we lived alone in Georgia. We didn't have any family around us. And so my dad would go golfing. And one day I was like, why doesn't daddy ever take us golfing? And my mom was like, he needs this. (laughs) He needs a break. And so I just thought, you know what? That's right. Yeah. This is this is a it's great, thing. This yep. is your thing. I do not need to be involved in your thing. You can have your own thing. Yeah. And then I met Chris, and he's like, "Why don't you ever come golfing with me?" And I think it's because you were conditioned he, to kind of. I was conditioned for that, but also I think in his brain, he does. I don't know how good he is unless I come and watch him play. Right. You know, and so it's gotten better because now so many people tell me how good he is, cool. and he's can you know, and you know, be proud You're of so it, cute. but. <laughs> I have gone golfing with him several times, but I just feel very uncomfortable. And I also feel bad that I'm out there hitting a ball and I don't care. Gotcha. And, you know, I don't want to slow anybody down or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also he gets mad that I don't care enough. Or, like, one time I birdied a hole. He got so mad at that. And, I, you know, it was just luck because I just... (laughs) So Ended mad. up, I hit a good drive, and then I I know how to play. I mean, the first time I ever played golf was at, um, uh, oh my gosh, this will make golfers so mad. Um, some really nice Pinehurst. course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where they some have the U.S. Place. Open. Yeah. <laughs> they had really good hot dogs. Not what number three, yeah. not Pinehurst yeah, yeah, yeah. three, but uh, yeah, I was out there for a military show, and it was... Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Well, it's another new year. We made it 2023. We did it. Congratulations. Hug yourself. Touch yourself. So that when you ask yourself who touched you, you know who it was. You got goals, guys. Okay? And you want to achieve all of them. Every single one of them. And Factor is here to help you do that. So if you're looking to fuel up fast with ready-to-eat nutritionists, nutritionists, nutritious meals, yikes. You ever just forget how to read? Meals delivered straight to your door. Um, then Factor's the place to go, okay? They, uh, they leave you time and energy to tackle everything else on your to-do list so you don't have to worry about where and what you're eating. Achieve and maintain your 2023 goals with Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, and start saving time eating well and living your best life yet. If you love Factor, probably because you're too busy to cook and you don't like going to the grocery store and potentially, you know, um, running into somebody uh, from your past. And you want to skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Well, Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, and all you need is heat and, uh, and a positive attitude. So whether your lifestyle is keto, calorie-smart, vegan, protein-plus options are on the menu each week. They're prepared by chefs and approved di- dietitians, not these unapproved dietitians, and each meal has all the ingredients that you need to feel satisfied all day long. 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options are there for you. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 36 plus sweets, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add ons. Cut back on takeout and get factor instead. Okay, it's ready to make, ready to eat food in just two minutes. Eating vegan or veggie is a snap with factor. Each meal is prepared by the chefs that know what you want and they're excited to give it to you. So head to factormeals.com slash last night 50 and use promo code last night 50 to get 50% off your first box. That's insane. I didn't know that was the deal until I just read it. That's crazy. 50% off at factormeals.com slash last night 50 and you're going to get 50% off your first box. That's insane. So you got to do it. There's no better deal out there and no better food as well. Factor.com slash about last night. Oh, wait, slash last night 50. Okay, do that. How cool is it that he? I'm sure you were a fan of Rich Eisen before. Like, is it just cool to like? Oh yeah. A to go on the show, you're always great with him. But it's like, I don't know. For 
a sports fan. Yes. I didn't actually watch his. It was pretty early. It had just started when mm. we first started dating. It's, um, but I mean, I remember seeing him on the the patio of the comedy store, and I said, "That's my boyfriend," and it took me so long to convince him of that. <laughs> But, you know, he was, you know, I used to have this bit, I think you probably remember it, about deal breakers and all the the reasons, the things that I don't like in a guy. You know, you can't have a roommate, you can't, you know, your car can't be a mess because that means your room's a mess, which means your life's a mess. You know, all this stuff, you have to valet, all this stuff. And literally Chris did every single one. I, I mean, he had a roommate, he was a total like you had he had a, a trail leading to his bed in his room because it was so messy what like All, neon like no like no ta- like no fun, like, like there's nintendo just so track much pad. stuff oh. in the room oh gotcha that there was a path <sighs> wow yeah and <laughs> you saved him oh yeah right <laughs> no but um but then i met him and and he brought something to the table that i had never had in my life where i was just so proud of him all the time and that was the first person that i ever dated that i found myself really bragging about when he wasn't around whoa yeah and like and i'm still just constantly proud of him he's just he's just so smart and good and he's just such a genius when it comes to sports it makes it very easy when you're a comedy sports writer yeah because i don't ever have to google anything i can just say oh yeah he really is i started doing baseball jokes on mondays and the other day i said who's the who's the person known for doing the most coke in baseball because i wanted to do a joke about the elevation at the baseball game in mexico i'm just like oh that field was higher than you know so instead of googling it i could just ask him because he's sitting right next to me and he goes you should just say the 86 mets and i go okay Wow! <laughs> so it makes also, a fun thing to include him in on. It's like, oh, yeah. uh, right? He loves like, it. yeah, because he he's a big comedy it. nerd. Yeah, he's a comedy guy. Was he? Loves, he he's very funny himself. Totally. Yeah. Which is why he compliments uh, Rich, Rich yeah. so well. And getting, I mean, at, well, I think I met him at the um, the. I'd known him from the show, but then met him at the big poppy roast. Oh right, yes. Um, mm-hmm. I don't even think we've talked about that since. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm so bummed that it never aired, but maybe it was for a the right reason i don't know we were also I'm kind of glad because i was so blacked out drunk when i went up you were hammered you told me that but you yeah two days later when i finally came but you murdered so like <laughs> I, so there was a teleprompter no i don't know like you 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 also had a a, a a smoothness to you and like a i don't think people knew you and i and josh wolf were sitting next to each other and so i think i i knew that we you were booze but i was also in full makeup so like who knows what i was was going on in my head and also gronk had just pitched me he's like he's like hey what do you think about this joke about talking about titty fucking josh wolf's wife after i shit on her chest i go yeah i mean i don't i don't know what the, is that so where's the joke again but like definitely i wouldn't do the i wouldn't chest. yeah i wouldn't, I wouldn't do, do the chest yeah part. i'd leave the poop out of it but like i think just the like it's already the visuals there if that's what you're going for and then he was like he was like so don't open with it i was like i mean if you're asking me, do I want to see you do that? One thousand percent, Gronk. Like I'm also, you're also asking me dressed as an eighty year old man. So like everything about this moment right now is a little so Nyquilly. And so he, uh, and then he did it, and it bombed. And then he, he did very Gronk fast. Goes, fuck you guys. I thought it was funny, and I was like, awesome. Yeah. No, um, he doesn't care. Was uh, that was such a cool weekend and getting to sit in the um, oh my god, the David owner's Ortiz, box. the owner's box to watch David Ortiz get his uh, number retired, which was crazy too because. The I went to Poppy's house with Josh Wolf and Anthony Mackey to smoke a blunt in his backyard because Josh is buddies what? with him. And when? after the roast. Oh, I was too hammered to later. even know that that was, yeah. Oh, we told you. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you, Yeah, yeah you, did, yeah. you said something about, yeah, the 86 Mets. And then but that um, was Catherine Veritek, Justin Veritek's like, wife got, got me you drunk. hammered. Oh, wow. She got me a drink and I hadn't eaten that day. I was pretty nervous. Yeah, we, me too. And then next thing I know, <sighs> yeah. Wow. I don't know. Did but, you have fun though? Oh, I had a blast. Yeah. I've seen videos of it. It's not as bad as I, no. I like have it pictured in my yeah. head. But that's because I wrote a lot of really good jokes and the fact that I got them out and then I and then I think I uh, called an audible on my first joke, which was just about because I was getting called a whore because I was the only woman on the show. So mm. that what else are people gonna call me? Um, and also, but I don't have a reputation either of like I haven't had a DUI or right. a, you know right. like anything right. bad. So people just call me a whore, and then I said, "Oh, you guys are giving me a lot of credit. My list of sexual partners is a lot like Dustin Pedroia. It is incredibly short." Yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, a lot of short jokes. A lot of short jokes. So then that went over well. Yeah, I was kind of off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is um, <laughs> is there a true like? Is there a roast? Like I know they're gonna maybe do a Brady one. Mm-hmm. Um, is there like an athlete where you're like that you love so much that you would love to, maybe not even roast, but like meet? One of the cool things. I mean, the fact that we got to do that because of comedy yeah. is yeah. bonkers. The fact that NFL pile on on Amazon with with Taron Killam, you know, like all these cool opportunities from comedy. Uh, is there? I guess uh, um, uh, Hank Aaron's your favorite baseball player, right? Yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P. But uh, oh, is, but Chipper Jones would be fantastic. You ever met at least Chipper? He, no, I've never met. Well, I mean, not. I met him when I worked for the Braves in 99 and 2000, which was two great years to work for them. I was the one that shot the t-shirts out of the cannon and Shut the made fuck balloon up. animals. Why don't you open the podcast with that fun fact? <laughs> sorry. You were a t-shirt That's cannon not what girl? I was doing last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Sorry. You're right. All right. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was a, I was a t-shirt How do you cannon. get that gig? Great, great question. Um, there was a company called Sports Magic yep. that started in Orlando with the Orlando Magic. Sounds right. And um, so they, you know, ad in the paper back in the day, and I just answered the ad, and then we had to go to Orlando. What was the interview like? No, you had you had to do this for me real quick. <laughs> do that. Scream who wants a free fucking t-shirt. It was yeah. really just an interview cool. to see like if you had energy, pizzazz, and enthusiasm, pizzazz and yeah. But we had to do fan player interviews, so you had to have. But you, you know, crushed that. Yes. Yeah. That was when John Rocker played, and he was my favorite relief. Pitcher. He's still one of my favorite relief pitchers of all he was time. Great. The best run out of the bullpen, right? Didn't oh, he go full yeah. charge? I like. Want to rock. <laughs> yeah, but didn't he full on sprint? Out. Oh yeah. Every other guy, I feel like, takes their sweet ass time. But it wasn't just that he. I mean, I feel like, you know, <sighs> yeah. I just, I feel like it was. It wasn't just that he had a great intro, but mm. he was lights out. Like he had a fastball that wouldn't quit. He he was so good as a relief pitcher in an era where you know we were in the World Series. Oh you know, yeah, these were we were got swept by the Yankees, but we were in it. And that's and a coveted spot, like coveted spot, not easy to do. Mm. And then that's why you know when you you know say something dumb and then it's in the papers and then everybody calls you racist a racist. Or whatever, yeah. You're a pitcher. You can't just like let that go. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a you know obviously and you know he made a terrible mistake. But yeah. nowadays, I mean, people are even worse than that. I mean, I was <laughs> just gonna say like there's so bad. I mean, we have a guy on the Braves right now that was is on camera hitting his wife when the police show up. He still plays for them because they can't get rid of his con. You know, everything in baseball is guaranteed. That's a whole other fuck? subject. But you know, it's a uh, anyway. I so Chipper Jones would be a guy that if you could like yes. I don't know interview hang with like I but guess also a great roast because you mm. know famous for having sex with an Applebee's wait like knocking up a Hooters waitress he is yeah cool is that a, his wife no 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 he just he has a kid with an Applebee's waitress no a Hooters waitress Hooters from waitress. man that was probably in '96 wow something. yeah early on by the way good for Hooters that was probably great press yeah. right but Chipper Jones just, eats here in yeah. more than one way. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, mean, I don't know what the commercial is, but he's locked it back now. But he was he owned it. Like said, you know, Sandy Hook didn't happen. He's ah, <laughs> yeah, like, Chipper. He, he hey. locked it back. Okay, good. He yeah. figured it out. Good, good, good. You know, he was showing the light and he apologized. Cool, but, cool, cool. You know, now he's the Braves hitting one of the their hitting coaches. So uh, favorite sports movie of all time? Uh, probably right. League of Their Own. Wow. Why? Yeah. Um. Be- because it's Penny Marshall and it's women and it's baseball and I mean Tom Hanks is it's one of his best performances I mean most baseball movies that and Major League have to be up there Major League is I think has is is much funnier so sports comedy Major League might be my favorite or Sandlot yeah why 44 for the name of the special available on YouTube now streaming everywhere on YouTube um, it was the age I was when I recorded it, and it was Hank Aaron's number. Whoa, cool. Yeah. The intro is fucking rad. Thank you. Like, just you got to watch it to see it, but the huh. way it got, it, very clever. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you. This has been great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for making Thanks time. For Flew me. by. Yeah. A treat. Uh, we're going to close this out Uh-oh. with a little Inside the Actor Studio 10 question questionnaire. Mm. When I set this up, uh, Mark Marin goes, Oh, what do you got, a game? And then we started laughing, and then we did it. And he did it begrudgingly, but it was fun. <laughs> Neil Brennan said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. 
That sounds like. And me. then we did it, and uh, yeah. and it ended up okay. Uh, so this is uh, the ten question questionnaire that Lipton. Why uh, do you gotta play a game? Yeah. <laughs> is that Neil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> uh, so this is um, I'm gonna play James Lipton okay. and R.I.P. and um, and uh, and we're gonna get to know Sarah Tiana a little bit better with the end of uh, of this uh, questionnaire. Okay. Welcome back to the show. I'm with Sarah Tiana, star of 44, streaming now on YouTube. Sarah, what is your favorite word? My favorite word. No. Use it in a sentence. No, I don't want to play the rest of this game. <laughs> oh. oh, I don't like your attitude. What is your <laughs> What is your least favorite word? Um, it's the p word, like uh, for a woman's privates. Yeah. Not, not a fan. Not a fan either. Not a fan. I don't say it. I go out of my way to never use it on stage. Now that being said. Ha- have I slipped up and just been a dude yeah. in this in a crowd work thing of like Of course. I did it once I can think of right now where even as I said it I go, Ugh but it sounded funny because I was talking to a kid that was describing a video game so in depth and I just paused and I go, go, go Clayton, have you ever do you know what a and I was <laughs> like and it got a big laugh and I go mm-hmm. it sounded better than another word for it, but afterwards I was like, I don't like that I said that. It doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth either, but I also feel like it is. I attach it to this, to the gut, to just like, I don't know. It just feels very yeah. Not I just s- attach it to like some sort of crutch that some people use in comedy. Yeah. So, I'm not a fan. Cool, me too. Um, <laughs> what what turns you on, and it can be sexual or not. Oh, it would. It Matthew would be McConaughey said confidence. Winning a baseball game. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> I watch every single Braves baseball game, and my entire mood of the day is determined is based on how they do that day. I think I want to name my kid Ron Gant. Okay. Or Adam Pendleton Jr. <laughs> Adam. Based after Terry, Terry Pendleton. Pendleton. Yeah. Yeah. One of the best um, third base. Yeah. When Sid Bream. Mm. You, uh, we've talked about this, but that Braves team when the Mariners were dog shit <laughs> was my favorite other team. Also because once they started playing on TBS. And Chip Carey and Ron, or mm-hmm. uh, what was that guy's Carey. name? No, uh, the guy uh, talked like that. Skip Carey. Uh-huh. And then you had another guy that the Mariners had for a little bit. His son, I think. Something Carey. No. Um, who was the other main guy that did oh, the Braves Don games? Don Simpson? Yes, Don Simpson. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, there's another guy. Not important. Um, <laughs> but um, I just went to uh, Atlanta to shoot something and went to a Braves game on my day off. Mm. And then I'm going to back to do the punchline in a couple weeks, May 18th through the 20th. And uh, the Mariners, I, I planned a lot of weekends oh, this sure. year around the Mariners being there because uh, I got to know um, a, a bunch of the guys. And um, and I can't wait to see them there because that stadium is great. It's great. The battery is awesome. You got to go to Baseballism, the store Baseballism What's that's that? right there. They just make uh, t-shirts and apparel based on baseball. Do they have, they like- have the famous uh, shirt that I always love that says six, uh, four, three. Six plus four minus three equals two, which is a six four three double play wow. in a scorecard. Unless yeah. you're shooting it out of a cannon, I'm not buying it. Oh, the well, okay. I'll try to shoot. If you when bring you, it home, if you <laughs> order it, I'll shoot it out of a cannon. When you yours. go to games, do you like judge? To, are you kind of like the form? <laughs> They don't They're do pointing the, it too low. They stopped doing the cannons because oh. people kept falling out of the second deck. Good reason to stop it. <laughs> now they do slingshots. Can you imagine mm-hmm. that's your story? Oh, <laughs> oh I'm God. sorry. The way you giggle at, at, at Chris's rec league games, if you go to a funeral and they're like, Jake was a good guy, <laughs> man. And he wanted that shirt, but he also <laughs> wanted to live. And the stadium isn't set up to hold. He was a big guy. Yeah, he like... We always told him, man, you're too big to, you can't, you shouldn't be jumping. <laughs> Don't reach. Don't reach, man. <laughs> we'll get it for you. Um, um. Uh, and I'm reaching for you. Da- yeah. All right. What what turns you off? Turns me off yes. if the Braves lose. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. What sound or noise do you love? What sound or, or noise, noise do you the love? The crack of a bat. What sound or noise do you hate? <sighs> Or noise do I hate? I uh, I really hate. Um, uh, I hate the sound of dental floss being used, and I hate um, like cracking bones. Oof! Like knuckles cracking. Chris, oh yeah, he'll like go. Oh yeah. With his neck, yeah. I'm like, like that'll I, do you in. Yeah, 
I get like a, a sprig of sweat immediately. So I'm, my body just has a weird reaction to it. Uh, so like if somebody sent you like a, so you'd rather w- watch like filthy, awful, violent porn than like a chiropractor <laughs> compilation video. Yes, yes. That was Absolutely. my. That was the next question. <laughs> okay. Lipton had a weird fucking closing sure, of these sure, ten sure, grand. Sure, sure. Would you rather watch porn or chiropractor? <laughs> um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, I'd I'd love to be um, an like a, a murder investigator, like a detective. Ooh, maybe you can yeah. play a detective in your movie. Maybe. Do we? Did you have a title? No, there's a story for it, right? Not it's the just title. The planners right now. The planners. Oh fuck. That also feels like it could be a. Ocean's Eight type star studded cast. Yes, for sure. Right? All women planning a movie. Let me cast. It, let me cast it for you. Okay, let me cast it for you right now. With I mean, I Sandy just. Re- Bullock. I mean, come, I'll, I'll put She's, in a good word. <laughs> I know it's right. Oh, I forgot. Oh you know man. Her. Oh, sexing with her two <laughs> days ago. Whenever we do the pitch, we all, it's always Sandy Bullock, and we call instead of Sandra, we like we know her Sandy Bullock. Well, yeah. she's yeah, she's Sandy. Once you get to know her, <laughs> if you for sure once you get to that place and you want me to like pass along, I'll straight up forward it to her. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, you just got to let me play the Jewish deli owner with a heart of gold. And you're like, Adam, you there isn't a- be the guy that, that we murder. Done. <laughs> if, it, if, she, if it's sent to her and she does it, done. <clears throat> um, I'd throw in, I'd probably throw in right now, I really like uh, Caitlin Olsen, the Ashley Olsen, uh-huh. Mary Kate. She's crushing it. Um, our girl it's Elizabeth Sa- Olsen. It's, that's who it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, who, uh, yeah. Um, Sally Field, you got to throw in there. Sure. Our girl. Um, and then I feel like you need like- you need like a deep cut, like Raven Simone, like the same way that they had, um, not Erica Badu, who was in Ocean's Eight? They had, um, oh, Kravitz, right? Wasn't Zoe Kravitz? No. Oh, Zoe Kravitz. No. And then there's Zoe um, the girl that was in Glass Onion, um, uh, the singer. Yep. Zendaya? No. No. Um, <sighs> I'm so bad. Rihanna. Is- Rihanna was in Ocean's Eight. Oh. And that's who you're thinking of too, right? No, I'm not thinking of her. Oh. Sorry. Yikes. Right. Uh, anyway, everyone's what? screaming at home because <laughs> they know the answer. How do you not know the cast of Glass Onion? <laughs> what profession other than your own would you not like to do? Oh, um, a teacher. Yeah, that seems tough. Although I feel like you would crush it. I was a substitute teacher here for a, a little while, and I took it way too serious. I, I mean, I was writing letters home, and I was there for a day. I took it way too seriously. What grade? Elementary school. And I was always in inner city, like rough schools. Oh, wow. And I was just like taking it. Your sweetness was, was taking advantage of. It, oh, know? wow. Like, I was like, I can change in it. it was, you got to go with that attitude. You do, but. Man, that's a tough. It's just heartbreaking when when you don't get met halfway, you know, either by the school or the parent. Did they and call you Miss Tiana or Miss Haynes? They call me Miss Tiana. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and when I taught high school, I would, you know, I would show them stand-up clips if they did all their work. Cool. Yeah. Great reward. You need incentives. You need incentives. And you need comedy. Comedy, if you can get through to the kiddos with comedy, I feel like you can. Yeah. You can. Um, I just, I my sister is a very good teacher, and I just, mm-mm. At, now that I have a toddler, I'm like, nope, I can't, I'm yeah, not. Fuck I, that. I don't have enough patience to do it all day. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, you're, you got a funny way of doing things, <laughs> right? We'll let you're it funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's maybe one of the best answers we've heard. You got a funny way of doing. You got a funny I'm way of doing. I died in a funny way. Because that's also like God. Like I don't know. I pictured God like mm. he, yeah, sitting back in a chair, drinking like an all sport, and he's just like you're funny drinking way a liquid it. death. Drinking a, drinking a liquid <laughs> death. Oh my God! Great sponsor. Funny Great way commercial. Yeah, you got a funny way of doing things. I do know I want my tombstone to say "Finally a nap I don't have to wake up from." Funny, a funny tombstone, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what you were really good at that I just remembered of was Mo Show Comedy Knockout that you and Brad and I did for True TV. Oh yeah, great yeah, episode. Yeah. Hey, if you can find it somewhere, every now and then people post little gifts and memes I and whatnot. I posted clips of me and Brad on that. I yeah, guess I don't, you were on that episode with us too. I yeah. guess they haven't found. I got it, knocked but... out of it. Yeah, but um, <laughs> Brad, you know, it was kind of like Saratiana joke heavyweight, and then uh, hey, tough to overshadow a dwarf. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brad and I went to a Laker game once, and and he got us uh, courtside seats somehow. He won through an auction or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, 
and he was dancing during if we on the way to the game. I go, Brad, kiss Cam. He goes, I'm in. And then I go, dance Cam. He's like, fucking, I, should we plan something? And it starts uh, going, and Brad gets up, and he's going to town, and everyone's going nuts. And it was sold out, and everyone's they they wouldn't cut to him on the jumbotron so it was erupting people were getting louder and louder because they're like cut to the fucking dancing dwarf <laughs> and finally they did and the place went nuts and brad like closed it out and i'm sitting behind him videotaping and just fist pumping like an asshole and all my buddies were like dude why didn't you get up and dance with him i go because uh-uh. nobody goes no. hey who's that guy behind the dancing midget it's <laughs> the only thing that trumps dancing dwarf is more dancing dwarf if yeah. another dwarf had popped over my shoulder mm-hmm. and like that's the only thing that could have joined yeah. thing person uh, don't yeah. cancel me but it um <laughs> Yeah. Um, You're like, if I could have lifted him up and then he did a flip. I tried that's, to, the, that's the only thing I have. He, the guy surprises me all the time. He had a vitamin water in between his uh-huh. feet and he flipped it up to himself. And I'm sitting there and I just go, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I, know. I go, I've been friends with you 10 years. I don't know you could do that. He goes, every every time you hang, you're going to learn something new. He's like about about my people. But he I goes, know. what am I do? Get off the chair? I go, yeah, I guess not. I remember, I don't know if you remember, but I happened to be playing Tahoe when you guys were up there for his basketball yes! party. Yes! Oh, yeah! And I come and I join you guys, and you're playing craps. He's standing on a on a chair. Yep. Playing craps, yep. rolling dice. Every, there's a crowd around. Yep. And I just ask him, I go, what did you do today? And he goes, oh, we went to a brunch, you know, then we went and rode jet skis. Then we, and I just, I have no idea what he said after we rode jet skis. Because <laughs> I started imagining Brad on a jet ski. Yeah. And I'm thinking, is he flying? Is he holding? on and then his little legs are flying oh in the wind. I'm like, I my cannot god picture is he it. holding on and so <laughs> maybe a couple weeks later i see him again and i go i gotta ask <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, I'm very good on a jet ski because I have a lot of grip with my thighs. Yeah. He's, and, and you just, you know, every, it's all in the wrist. Yeah. And I go, okay, great. Yeah. No, I don't have to imagine. <laughs> no, I but can I, sleep. For two weeks, <laughs> I have been trying to figure out how this is possible. That was amazing. People, we were in a nice little craps winning streak and people, were, yeah, there was a crowd because everybody, because Brad kept, people would come over, Brad would go, make a wish, rub my head, whatever. <laughs> I mean, walking through Brad with a, in a casino, we did uh, Pachanga in Temecula once, and there was like a, a Japanese businessman convention there, and they would all walk through and rub his head, and I would go, I was like, Brad, what is, is this like a weird Japanese businessman, like little person tradition? And he was like, I had to speak, the county club wanted me to speak to them earlier today and just say like, good luck, gambling, and he said, if you rub a dwarf's head, it's good luck. But he didn't tell me that, so they're all walking through the casino, <laughs> rubbing his head, and I was like, hey man, are you cool with that? You want me to do something? He's like, no, no, I told them earlier. Really. Uh, at Sarah Tion on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Yes. 44 is a special on YouTube. Go check it out. I love you. Thank you. Love Thank you, you more.